morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told how to voice the radio. So today, I want to talk about a weird deck that's starting to see a little bit of love and a little bit of play. You see, the lovely Benjamin Pham, and I can confirm lovely, I know the dude, very lovely dude, has gone and got 26th place at the Paris Special Event with a Quagsire Naganadal deck but not in the way we're used to actually seeing it. Now, I know this is not the only time this deck has top cut lately, but that's the list on which I am going to be focusing. So let's have a little bit of a look, shall we? Now, it all starts, and it all based really around Quagsire and Naganadal. Now, Quagsire's got the amazing ability that lets you move all of your water energy and play to your active Pokemon. But in order to actually do that, you, you, you've got to have some water energy on the field. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where Naganadal comes in. Naganadal's got the wonderful ability, whereby once during your turn, you may search your discard pile for a basic energy and attach it to Naganadal. And the energy isn't stranded on Naganadal, because you can then use Quagsire to move it to the active. Now, this deck has been played for a little while, but it looks a bit different to how it used to look. Now, should mention here, Quagsire in and of itself is a fine attacker. Free water energy, 60 damage base, plus 20 more for each water energy attached to Quagsire. It's good against non-GX, it's very good if you're hitting for weakness, and with Reshiram and Charizard decks running around, and Blacephalon decks running around, there will be a bunch of options here, a bunch of opportunities, a bunch of times where you can actually be hitting for weakness. But the wonderful news is that this is not the only option. Now, Naganadal is also a decent attacker. 80 damage for free energy is good against weak, psychic weak Pokemon, i.e. non-GXs. But if your opponent has exactly three prizes remaining, you do 160, which should get pretty much any non-GX. And should get basically anything you're hitting for weakness. So great against something like Mewtwo and Mew. But do watch out for Jirachi. Although it is actually enough to KO a Jirachi. So if Jirachi's stopping you one hitting Mewtwo and Mew. Maybe you just one hit Jirachi. Just putting that out there. But then we get to all the other Pokemon. And there are quite a few of them. We've got the newer Naganadal GX. The second one. And this is phenomenal. Well, for multiple reasons. The ability is really nice. It allows you to discard an Ultra Beast from your hand and draw free cards. But it's also got Venom Shot here. One Psychic, free colorless energy. And you discard two energy and do 170 to the bench. And the great news here is that with Naganadal and Quagsire, you can just replenish the energy every turn and do this over and over. If your opponent benches a Jirachi or a Dedenne, you're golden. Now, again, they, they have gotten out to this. They can play Mew. But if they don't get the Mew down quick enough, you can just start wrecking their bench. We also play Caldeo GX, and that shouldn't surprise you here. It's a deck playing Water Energy. Caldeo GX is great. Caldeo GX has that ability, Pure Heart. And Pure Heart prevents all effective attacks, including damage, done to Caldeo by your opponent's Pokemon GX and Pokemon EX. And again, your opponent does have an option here. They can play Power Plant. But they might not be. In any deck that isn't playing Power Plant, in comes Caldeo to wreck. Now, stop me if you've heard this one before. We're playing Espeon and Deoxys. We love Espeon and Deoxys. And it really is here for the GX attack. You see, Espeon and Deoxys has a lovely GX attack for one Psychic, two Colorless Energy. That lets you drop 10 damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way that you like. Or, if you get an extra free energy on there of any description, 20 damage counters. And we've seen in the past that a Pidgeotto-focused deck can be wrecked by this. An Evolution deck that doesn't evolve fast enough can have two or three of their basics 
KO'd before they get a chance to evolve, and that just wrecks your opponent's plans entirely. Obviously, we see a Ditto Prism Star so that it can evolve into any of your Stage 1s, and we see Volcanion Prism Star here, which is a sneaky underrated card. Although, to be fair, it's basically a one of in every decent water deck, we just don't see many water decks lately. Volcanian's ability Jet Geyser lets you discard a water energy from your hand, make your opponent switch their active, and then for free water energy, 100 damage and 20 to all of your opponent's bench. It's a great attack, but it's a bit expensive. But in a Quagsire Naganadal deck, you kind of take away the fact that it's a bit too expensive, and you're left with, it's a great attack. Cool. Now, we do play Wondered NAGX here as an option just to draw some cards and get set up in the early game. We'd rather not use it, but it's there if we need it. And we play a Mew ourselves here to protect against bench damage from other annoying decks. We then see one Alola Ninetales. Now, this is the one that is completely immune to GXs. I mean, also EXs, but there's none of them in standard. Just... Full on immunity, prevent all effective attacks, including damage, done to this Pokemon by your opponent's Pokemon GX or Pokemon EX. Now, you're only playing one of these, and you're not playing any Alolan Vulpix, but we do have Ditto Prism Star. It's not a major focus of the deck, but if you can get this out against a GX heavy deck, you can absolutely make yourself a little bit of hay here. And then we see one of the Onyx from Lost Thunder. The one that people got mad at me for making a video about, I regret nothing, this card's seen a lot of play. And it's just 4 energy, 120 damage. But it's on a fighting Pokemon, and Pikachu and Zekrom is weak to fighting. And you're accelerating energy. So you've got a non-GX that you can easily get the energy on that gets a one-hit KO on a Pikachu and Zekrom, which is the best deck at the moment. I'm, I'm cool with that, if I'm honest with you. That sounds fine to me. Now, in terms of energy here, we see eight water, as you might expect, and then two rainbow energy. Now, these could be psychic because Naganadal GX and Espeon and Deoxys both need psychic, but this allows you to attach with a Lola Ninetales, and it allows you to count it as a water energy if you so wish, and does actually open up Naganadal's GX attack. Add a card from your opponent's discard pile to their prize cards face down. It's not a phenomenal GX attack, but it's actually quite a nice one in some circumstances. And you don't have to use it, but playing Rainbow Energy gives you the option of doing so, if you so wish. Now, in terms of trainers, it's very straightforward, which is weird because this has not been a straightforward deck. But we've only got eight different kinds of trainers, and there's no real tricks here, like, at all. We've got four copies of Lily and four copies of Cynthia. They are the two best draw cards in the game, so four of each of them, so that we can get set up and draw what we need. Four copies of Pokemon Communication, because although it's not perfect, it's the best option we've got for searching out our Pokemon. Non-GX decks have a hard time getting their Pokemon. Incidentally, that's the biggest downside of the deck. You need a bunch of non-GXs, and the only Pokemon search we've got is Pokemon Communication. Except when you want your Psychic Pokemon, and not all of these are Psychic, or Dragon. But if you want your Psychic or Dragon, we've got Mysterious Treasure. No good for your Wooper, no good for your Quagsire, your Volcanion, your Ditto, your Alolan Ninetales, your Onyx, your Dedenne. But it will still get your Naganadals, and your Espeon and Deoxys, and your Mew, so it's not all bad. We've then got three copies of Acrobike does a couple of things. Firstly, it lets you draw cards. You look at the top two cards of your deck, one in your hand, one in your discard. But also, it can put energy in your discard, which is really important for the whole accelerating it with Naganadal thing. We've then got two copies of Poker Gear 3.0, which is good for making sure you draw the right supporter at the right time. You're only playing two supporters, they're both draw supporters, so it just means that you'll hopefully get one of them a little bit quicker. One copy of U-Turn Board to help you retreat, and if it gets discarded, it goes back to your hand, reduces your retreat cost by one. And our stadium of choice here is Viridian Forest, which, well, you discard a card from your hand, 
and then search for a basic energy. It means that you can search for your water energy, but it also means you can discard your water energy so that you can accelerate it with Naganadal. You can only attach one from your hand each turn, so having the opportunity here to get it in the discard so you can accelerate it with Naganadal, yes, that sounds good to me. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Very weird deck, very cool deck. One that I like quite a lot, and one that's seeing a bit more play as time goes by. But right now, I'd like to know what you think about it, so let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Plays, where we talk about a whole bunch of games that don't even have any Pokemon in. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.